In 1854, cholera struck the city of London. Over 600 people died in just a few weeks. Physician John Snow is often credited with discovering that cholera is a waterborne disease and with ending the 1854 epidemic by removing the handle from the contaminated Broad Street pump. The full story is much more interesting. I've been reading about the John Snow pub for years. There it is. Look at that. Right here on what used to be Broad Street is this fine looking uh, pub. There's this very inauspicious sign that says here the red granite curbstone over there marks the site of the historic Broad Street pump associated with Dr. John Snow's discovery in 1854 that cholera is conveyed by water. So that's a really simple summary of the whole John Snow story. And uh, to give you just an overview, here's the story. So it's 1854, it's really hot, in the end of the summer in London, we're here in Soho, which was a very crowded neighborhood filled of tenements with people not of a lot of means. And there were a lot of people crammed into these buildings, you know, many, many people to an apartment. And it's hot and it's sweaty. And the part that you can't imagine looking right now, because it's still, still pretty crowded, it's not that hot, but it's still pretty crowded. Here, the street now is completely clean. We see street sweeping vehicles, we see drainage in the streets, we have sewers. None of that was true in 1854. Instead, the people who lived in these buildings, some of them had cesspools in these little front courtyards, and they would take their human waste and other waste and just kind of throw it out the window into the cesspool or bring it down to the cesspool. And then it would drain wherever it drained. And the street, whoa, was not something that you could easily walk on and keep your feet clean. Wow, that's slippery and disgusting. And so people were used to this kind of somewhat disgusting uh, ambiance. And people thought that when there were terrible outbreaks of disease, especially cholera, that it was caused by the very poisonous air, this miasma that they called it. And the smell from all the poo and all the animal waste was pretty horrible. And it was a pretty sensible theory to think that that could be causing disease. But John Snow, who lived not far from here, we'll go there later, was a physician in London who was convinced that cholera in particular was a waterborne disease. It was not carried in this smelly air. And what happened here on this spot in 1854 was that there was a baby who lived at number 40 Broad Street, which would have been just about here, baby Lewis, who came down with some sort of terrible disease that caused really uh, uh, terrible diarrhea. And I think pretty quickly people realized that it was cholera and that there was going to be another outbreak of this very terrible disease. And people started dying. All right, so what happens? What happened was the waste from um, Baby Lewis and other people who became ill uh, with the cholera, so human fecal matter, mixed with the water supply that was in a relatively shallow well, I believe about 20 feet down under the street right here. And then the cholera bacteria began to multiply and then people would ingest the water, which provides the human intestine the place where uh, the, the bacteria multiply best. They need, they need a host like that. So anyway, when people ingest this contaminated water, they come down with cholera from which you die in hours to days. And John Snow, who really was looking for a place where he could unfortunate circumstances as they were, have a very concentrated outbreak of cholera where he could study the origins of the outbreak, was interested in helping the people, but also interested immediately in collecting information about what was gonna happen in this outbreak. So he would have come over here to this neighborhood and started canvassing all the people around here to see who was dying and who needed help and what they had done um, to possibly ingest water from the various water supplies in the area. And right here, um, at a location right near this red curbstone, was a source of what was apparently some very clean tasting, uh, sweet tasting actually, water uh, for drinking. Uh, right here, it's called the Broad Street Pump. And it turned out, as he started canvassing the neighborhood, that he realized that most of the people who had fallen ill and who were continuing to fall ill had drunk water from this particular pump. So there were other water pumps in the neighborhood, and one of the things that we'll see later is that in the end, when he put all his data together and he made a map, he had to show 
that this pump, by walking, was the closest to almost all of the people who eventually died, 600-something people who died in the epidemic. And so even though there are other pumps that are geographically potentially nearer to those people, this one tasted good and was close to the people who died by walking. So in epidemiology today, it's known that one way to really make your case is to have uh, exceptions to the rule. So people who should have died, who didn't die, and then people who did die for no apparent reason. And so John Snow in his work actually found both of those kinds of exceptions. And so one case is uh, what people sometimes refer to as the people who were saved by the beer. And so these were the brewery workers who worked a few blocks from here and drank mostly beer and so had a clean supply of things to drink. And the other case was the workhouse that was near here. And these were the most indigent uh, potentially people in the, in the poorest of health. And so why did they live? They systematically survived this epidemic. And part of the reason, the main and most important reason, is that the workhouse had a well, it had its own source of clean drinking water. So there are the exceptions of people who should have died and didn't die. And then what happened was he also found out about a family who would bring water to a member of that family who had moved far, a couple miles outside of this neighborhood. And they brought her some water, an elderly aunt, and she and, and her niece drank it. And those people both died. So to us, looking at modern epidemiological methods, Jon Snow had plenty of evidence to say that this water from this well contained the contaminant that caused the disease. But it still took actually many years until uh, the locals believed his story. And another thing that we should mention is that Jon Snow did not collect all this data himself. If you look around the street here, you'll see that this is a very busy neighborhood with lots and lots of people. And I think it was even busier in 1854. But it was a small, contained community. And there were people, for example, like the, the uh, curate, uh, Henry Whitehead, who was a local, who kind of knew everybody. And so Jon Snow worked with Whitehead and with other people in the area to, to really canvas the information and collect the kind of sociological demographic information that he needed to know who lived where, when they died, where they likely got their water, who they talked to, who they came in contact with, all kinds of other details about their personal lives. And so that kind of human data collection in this tightly knit community was also really, really important.